Welcome back. Let's look at the, uh, the rest of this stuff on this notice board. A pink note. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Okay, now we'll take it down. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. We also got a pushpin. It's a pushpin. Another item that can be of great use in adventure games. I'm sorry, but big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what's called pandering to your target audience. Okay, that's all uh, on, that we can do on the board. So now let's talk to Fiona. Uh, there's a pretty long conversation with her, actually. Got a lot of information about the people who live here. Just some background stuff, but it is morning, pretty interesting. Good morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. But I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh yes, the school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live. Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Fiona sounds quite uh, British. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Oh. Well. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Well, let's ask her a few questions. Like I said, it's basically background information, but it adds a lot of texture to the game to uh, know a little, a little bit more about uh, the people and the places. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why? She's your best friend, darling. 
I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then? Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt, and although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here, next to you and Charlie. She's my favorite tenant. Considering that as far as I know, there are only four tenants living here, putting her on the third place <laughs> doesn't really mean much. Especially considering Zack is the fourth one, the asshole we saw upstairs. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. Now let's ask about Charlie. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. Subtle. Oh, well, Zach Lee, that's the uh, asshole we just saw upstairs. What's up with Zach Lee? Zach? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. <laughs> Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice. And I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. 
Nice, all this talking about sex. Anyway, we'll continue talking to Fiona in the next video.